Hello everyone and welcome to the 36th episode of the HSBG podcast. I'm your host Educated Cons. I'm here with my constant co-host Shady Bunny. Shady Bunny, how you doing? I'm very well, Cons. Good to be here. How are you? I'm doing all right. Doing good. Now, first thing I want to say is where have I been? Where have you been? Where's everybody been, right? Jamaica, that's the answer. We've been in Jamaica, <laughs> no, but we've Secret missed training a, program. But. Yeah, we've missed a couple weeks, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, things came up, you know, life-threatening illnesses, or no, we don't have a good excuse, right? We've been playing some TFT. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I got somewhat sick, but yeah. Oh was, yeah, Shady yeah. was sick. Exactly. <laughs> and I, college it, was it there to help me through it. Yeah, you know, just spent some time, you know. Flew over, That's you know how done. it is. The, the, the grass yeah. But um, generally, we were back. We were away for a while, but we're back. So hopefully we can keep our schedule uh, co- uh, consistent again. You know, we've been really good at that. So, uh, you know, I think we're afforded some vacation time, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> but uh, yeah, sorry about that. But we always start with the weekly overview. How about you, Shady? How has your Battlegrounds week been this time? You know, Diablo's gone, everything fancy. Overall, it's been really good. Like the the first day, so we took a little bit of a break. It's the topic is going to be on there uh, where we played some TFT, and man, I came back and I was on fire. I was like, "What the hell? This is not supposed to happen. I'm supposed to be rusty. I'm supposed to like do some weird stuff, but..." No, it was. It's like I was seeing a whole new side of the game. Now I've had some some bad days, some good days, but overall it's been really good. Where like this morning I turned on the stream and I got like four firsts in a row, and I'm like, "What the hell, man? Like this is crazy." So welcome to the party. Yeah, it's honestly, and this this happens a lot. Usually near the end of the expansion, and I guess we're kind of getting kind there, of right? Here, For yeah. or the, the life cycle of the leaderboard, at least, uh, where. I I don't really have a system anymore, but it's more like you just have so many different lines that you know of that you kind of just trust yourself and you said, all right, just make the strongest move on the board for the most part, level, and you'll figure it out. And some games, it's like some some Agam scaling, some games you get the light spawn, some games you do some brand Murloc shit, but there's no like, there's no forcing, there's no like, oh, we gotta play this, or I gotta level on this turn, or like, I was playing Galakron, and I made like this golden gas coiler, I was like, yeah, whatever, man, it like, works, so, so yeah, I, I feel like I'm moving more to where it's like how you usually play the game, like, what's the plan? Like, it's just like, just make good plays, right? So, yeah, my, my week's been surprisingly good, you you know, I was really expecting a few days of just getting and smashed in the face yeah. by people. What about you? My week's been, uh, I don't know, you know, I haven't played too much. Uh, this, it's been a thoughtful week. I've done a lot of soul searching and thinking this, uh, this week, you know, just having some time uh, by myself to think about things. And, you know, Battleground's been there too. I played a couple of games or so. Uh, and you know, generally, I mean, you know, battlegrounds have played for a long time. It's it's not hard to be bad. It's hard to be bad. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, maybe a weird thing, but yeah, it, there's there's a lot of um, skills that you've learned over the years that you can just translate into and, and do well, right? Like, I mean, that's why you can go and play a different, um, you know, auto battler game and do well as well, right? Just because. There are a lot of skills translate really well, right? So even if you're not playing it too well, you can go back and play, really, really feel the meta out and stuff like that. But it is interesting not having Diablo in. I think that's like a major thing. We're going to talk about that for sure. Um, and it does change how you look at things, how you approach things. And in a sense, it, it, it kind of goes back to old style, but I feel like Diablo's presence has changed like people's mentality in some situations where people are like a little bit more able to just like let me let me push here you know diablo would kill me here let me push here right and they, they've kind of they've been forced to train that skill set i guess to like able to like that survival i need to be strong in one turn like right now before diablo kills me right so i i, I do notice that people are able to just like not roll over i guess as easily as they they were before because they've been so conditioned to get strong at this particular window that people are doing it still even though diablo's not in that's kind of cool to see. Kind of annoying if you're not like 
ready for it. But you know, it's cool to see. Like, oh yeah, I can see Diablo's influence in this game right here. And so that that's been that's been interesting. Uh, just checking out and seeing and and seeing. Oh, people are changing. People are learning. You know, this hero, even though maybe not a uh, super popular at the end, did have a noticeable impact on how people adjust and play and stuff like that. So that's that's been my overview of it this week. But yeah, it's kind of kind of cool stuff to see. Uh, next topic we have will be our TFT adventure. So we were off, um, I think after, I don't know why we played TFT. It's because it came out or something. <laughs> Uh, it was something we were looking at, right? Yeah, Double up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, then the, the me just getting sick after Rivals was the perfect excuse for I'm like, hey, I can't yes, focus. Battlegrounds. Let's play some TFT. Yeah, it was after Rivals. Exactly. There it is. Yeah. And then it came out. We wanted to play some TFT. Yeah. So we just spent like a week or so just kind of playing the game, learning the meta, learning everything, right? It's always like TFT, I feel, is one of those games where it's like it looks so daunting to play. I, I guess if you don't know anything, you're like, dude, where are all these buttons? Where are these heroes? Where are these abilities? Where are these traits? Where are these items? And then you're just like, what? How can you play this game? But it's 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 really not the worst, right? If you just focus on it one step at a time, right? You just learn the heroes, right? You, you learn the abilities, then you learn the items, and you know, put stack stack the learning on top of each other, uh, and eventually you're like, yeah. Katarina Rero, let's go, you know, da 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 da. Oh, Yordas, da 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 da. That that has a whole like that has that means so much for me to say that. Like Katarina Rero, if you haven't played TFT, what does that even mean? But right? it's like, yeah. oh, we're staying low level. We're gonna put these three items on Cat. We're just gonna stay here. We're gonna deal damage. We're gonna position in this position because we're playing assassins. We're playing assassins. Why? Because I said Cat, and Cat means assassin. We're gonna transition that Kali. Da, da, da. It was like, there's so much content in that, like two two words, right? But just because we've stacked all these little tips and tricks and strategies on top of each other, that those two words mean so much and if i say over oh, an arcanist force you know that what does that mean we're going camp tank you know victor's yeah. coming in let's go sphere of sojourn da, da, da. it's like all that stuff <laughs> just like with it's over two it's items, over you're dead, dead. <laughs> Nothing to victor do. too yeah you know it's, Wait for it. you're dead. but it's just the process of learning that game right it looks so daunting but there's a lot of little things you learn over time and if you do want to play the game right I, um I do overall I do recommend um if you have a friend or something like it's really really was a fun experience playing it with double up was yeah. amazing. If you're if you're like going solo double up, eh, you know, a little less enjoyable, I think. I played a couple of those, you know. Shady wasn't around every day. <laughs> he was but, <laughs> but uh uh generally I think if you have a good friend you wanna, you know, play some games together, this is definitely and you like the auto battle genre, this is definitely something that w that was a fun time while we were playing it. So, um, cool stuff. Any interesting things about the game experience or anything that you want to you know talk about? Yeah. So, I mean, you mentioned that it's really daunting to pick up, right. and I absolutely agree with it. And I think it's just you need to learn the game through a certain strategy. Has been my experience in TFT. So, if if you come in completely fresh then you just don't care about items you don't care about positioning and you just like okay let me just collect units of the same tribe and do that and try to make two stars and three stars and see what that does because then you have a game plan and you'll actually be able to finish your turns you'll actually be able to finish spend your gold but if you have you know, no idea about the game and you come in and you start worrying about items, you start worrying about positioning, you start worrying about scouting, you, you know, like that's how you end up with uh, way too much money the whole the time. Um, regardless, like more specific to our experience, I think it was really cool. Yeah, we, we, we settled in pretty quickly where I was just spamming Yordles and then Collins was just be like, all right, this Katarina thing's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I just pick whatever feels good. And then I was like, all yeah. right, let me focus on that. That was initially Kat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we both evolved where yeah. that worked actually pretty damn well, where we were just crushing, but then we were fighting noobs and we were noobs. And then we learned quickly and our opponents got better. 
And then we suddenly got this point where I'm, I'm like, yeah, Yordles ain't it. And Colin's like, yeah, Katarina ain't it. And then we're just adapting from there. And then, yeah, sometimes I would play Yordles. Sometimes Colin's would play Katarina. But it would be key, would be because you get, like, perfect cat items right. and two Katarinas immediately. Or I would just get, you know, like, six Yordles super early or whatnot. Uh, but it's been, it was super, super fun. At, at the very beginning, right, there's... Uh, items you use to transfer a champion from your board to your uh, partner's board. And at the very beginning, you would routinely end the game with like two of those left first. Like, <laughs> I don't know, I'm just playing my own game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the the more you get adept at the game, you're like, I don't have one yet. No, I can't send this over. I know exactly what he needs, but I can't send them this, this you know, like what, whatever unit it is that you've got ready, but you got to wait another two fights or so until you get another room to send it over. So, so that was an interesting evolution. And that's something that I also really just saw coming where, yeah, I'm going to need more of these the better I get at the game because I'm really going to know what I want to send over. And because uh, at the very beginning, we were just like, I don't know what you need. Tell me what you need. Tell me what you need. And you're like focusing on your own game. And the more you Would play, you like, they just need to say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's just like, you know, anytime Colin said a Vex early, it's like, ah, oh, ship that over. It's great. I mean, I don't want to like spend too much time on TFT as it is a BG podcast, but yeah, I mean, if you're into out of battlers and especially if you've got a buddy, uh, double up was amazing. It was super fun to play. Um, we got to uh, double, I believe the tier is called, which is like the final the tier. And then, tier, whatever the highest yeah. tier, we did it. That's us. We, we were we were somewhat close to top one hundred, but then we like fought the big boys and we got repeatedly smashed. We're like, all right. <clears throat> Back to battlegrounds so on nah, completely right. unrelated note. Uh, nah, it's nah, just time, it's, right? It's, it's we were we were gonna end that day pretty much. I I felt. Yeah, like yeah, we were basically gonna end. It was just like, yeah, okay, it's because um, to, to get the rank them, one player and we uh, didn't <laughs> go out. Yeah, so like we just, earned that. We earned that <laughs> privilege to get our face smashed. In, so, but then you um you know to to to, to improve from zero percent to like eighty percent that goes incredibly fast right like we we are we are very good at that but then uh or, or maybe even to like ninety percent of the potential but then to go from ninety to ninety five from ninety five to ninety nine like that takes ages it's the same thing Who in bG even has that to be fair in the game I don't even know if there's a player that no i mean i mean relative to other players right oh, oh. So if, if the best player would be at hundred percent or whatnot then for you to um, get even close to that it's the oh, same thing in bG okay. sure. yeah right so you would you would say like well you know i I got up to 7k MMR fairly quickly. It's pretty cool, right? And then you go like, you get better and get better. And like, oh, I got on the leaderboard. And I was like, that's that's a big investment already. But then you go from being on the leaderboards to consistently fighting for a top 25 spot. Yeah, that's, you're talking weeks, months, depending on the player of that relatively small jump compared to going from zero to 7k. Like that last one takes way longer than the rest of your journey combined because it's just yeah you're gonna be up against some very very strong players and it would be the same thing in tft so yeah we we ended it we ended it on a good note pretty much yeah it was fun anyways uh moving on we have uh twitch rivals i think we talked about it last time but we're talking about it again because there was another tournament another well, one i actually wasn't like that aware that there was another one like i, I, yeah, I just kind of got that news like hey there's another one and i was like oh nice cool i'm to put my pants back on you know kind of thing <laughs> yeah i was like pants again yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah we um we ran it back with the same team uh rdu both for shady and myself and uh also ran back the results you know <laughs> <laughs> No, pretty no. much just you know like if you've seen one you've seen them both right we played we got top four we played we got top two it's just cool so, yeah. I, yeah i will say i did not carry the finals i could have done better but i i know it shady keeps like it doesn't matter it's fine you know you did well to get us in top four which i agree with but i always want to mention that i didn't kind of through at the end you know that's a that's a blame i'll take on myself you know maybe next time i'll do better you, know, so you did as well as you could in the moment that's pretty much it right like well, whatever whatever happened right where you made a mistake or whatnot that's not on purpose right? 
Yes, it wasn't on purpose. I just, you know, casually, right. accidentally threw it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is way better than yeah. Inting. Right? Yeah. It was not purpose, Int. I was just, you know, I, I will say it was fun for me to be the guy carrying this time. Because yeah, last that's time, true. yeah, for those of you who watched the first Rivals, I was just sitting there with like, garbage heroes and bob wasn't giving me anything and it was just like fighting tooth and nail for like a top four here i was like yeah i got a shared fifth that's so good <laughs> and now i actually got the win some rounds i got i got the place of sneed and stuff so that, that was fun i was uh, i was crying i was like no <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's how it feels that collins it feels, yeah, for sure um <laughs> there was there was also another like big twitch rivals event um on i believe this monday as well right where um bgs wasn't like the main focus it was just like a small portion but the first winners of the first two got to participate not everyone that one participated i think there was like two or three fills in uh but overall you know um the people that won they deserve and it was a pretty cool tournament just seeing um the BG portion, at least for me, right? Like, I'm, I'm not really too interested in the other sections, but the BG portion was interesting just seeing them play and, and have that big, um, you know, the prize pool on the line, right? Because, you know, if people do, I feel people uh, pay, put more focus, right, based on prize pool sometimes, right? If you're doing like a small tournament, right, there'll be more or less, you know, rawr, you know, bloodthirsty bloodthirstiness in there when it's like a big tournament where everyone's going for the kill right that kind of thing so it's always nice to see and i thought it was pretty fun uh but yes there was a lot of bg events going on and uh, there's there's more actually and if we move on <laughs> but wait there's more. yeah so mooncoin league has its 2.1 finals so i believe that's going to be on december 12th so in a couple of days right i believe it's this weekend on the, 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 the one to 12, sunday. On sunday yeah so it's going to be a fun tournament a lot of scary players in there oh wait Sh except for shady you know and orange and you know you know and hopper bear those the rest of them, you know actually hopper bear you can kind of give respect to because they qualified in the other three the other three no they, they just got you know the free pass you know they're not going to be that good but the rest of them you know a lot of scary players there it's going to be pretty interesting hopefully uh you guys tune in to watch and it is this is even just a preview there's going to be another finals on april as well with an even larger prize pool so it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting tournament if you guys like bg content i know a lot of you that do watch this do so definitely tune in for that so that's always Always oh, funny. Anything you want to say there? Any uh, any scary opponents? No, just me. No, I was just it. checking. Like, I'm like, are we only playing our own lobby, or is it just like elimination there? Because I, I want to play against you, dude. Um, <laughs> you're, you're not in my lobby. So. I think there's going to be um, like top two from each are going into the lobby. This and, should and, be right. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Well, so you gotta advance, then I gotta it, advance. You know? yeah. We gotta we gotta get there. <laughs> we gotta be fun. Ah, yeah, that's gonna be interesting. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that <laughs> turns out uh, for sure. Then moving on, we have patch twenty two point zero. So there's a new patch that came out recently. So not a lot of like crazy changes, right? I think it's one of the more, um, you know, calm tone down patches for battlegrounds we've had in recent memory. Uh, one new hero in, and pretty much Berov is re returned to the Battlegrounds pool. I think it's hilarious that they never fixed the Berov bug. Right? That's just, <laughs> yeah, basically what this weird. means. Take him out. <laughs> right? That's they, why we release new heroes, so we can take, we can give one of them a little rest. <laughs> they literally um. had this Berov issue from day one. They're like, oh, this is a small Berov. Let's change, let's remove him because it, it was weird. And then it's like, what is it, a month later? All right, Diablo's gone, Vera's back. You know, it's like, oh, Vera, what happened to you? Well, they couldn't fix my bug. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was a little bit funny, so. Uh, but fortunately, it's back. I like Vera as a hero, so I'm glad to have him here. So, um, one hero that we will be talking about as well. But other than that, not, not too much crazy changes. I guess the most 
interesting change would be the battlegrounds boards that they added so what's your thoughts on on um just cosmetic stuff for battlegrounds because i've been wanting it for a while and it's cool that they finally do it i have checked out nothing is clickable i'm very disappointed i'd love to see some clickable function <laughs> in there too but other than that you know it, it's a start yeah it i mean i'm i'm all for those uh those updates because they're they're just a way for people to support the game without it affecting game balance which i think is the way to go right um one thing i will say that it's it's a bit weird sometimes when you're transitioning onto someone's board where it's mm -hmm. like a bit foggy and it's like flashy and stuff so sometimes it's a bit uneasy on the eyes where you go like oh okay it's got a special board so um yeah, I mean that's a, that's a very small complaint for the most part. It's it's cool and yeah, like you said, some interactive stuff. The way how um, classic Hearthstone has boards that could be uh, that could be a nice addition. Just just wait until you get like the super deluxe boards where dragons fly through the air and like burn fire on the board. You have a scarred area, time. Well, and then and then it just lies on on the top right corner just staring at you menacingly like yeah this is my board you know just wait <laughs> well, something um something sun mentioned or i think son and victor were like kind of memeing about it on twitter where you could have some like premium premium skin where the hero can kind of like pop out of the portrait right and right, run around on the that. board yeah so that would be <laughs> i don't know if that's worth the trouble and how much you know like we we've seen some things are like oh you know that might be too difficult to implement right so uh, I, yeah I th I think that might be legit a bit too much but yeah so something something to do during the fights and preferably something that your opponent can see as well <laughs> so that you know that you're running around or whatever or you're just popping your animations on your board and and they see it happening uh, although I don't know like that might get a little bit toxic or whatever when you're when you're about to ko Heart a guy and players be just, toxic no nah, they would never use an emote <laughs> in a certain way right but uh, but i guess you already have that where you know if you're gonna 0.5 percent lethal someone and you want to spam some happy cows you know they can already do that so <clears throat> but yeah overall i guess the uh, interactivity would be uh, a really fun feature to add to the cosmetics yeah, definitely cool. I'm glad to see them adding this kind of stuff. I think it's been needed for a long time anyway. So, you know, you got to start somewhere. There we go. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely better than uh, just no board Nothing, yeah. cosmetics. All right. So now we are finally talking about some of the changes here. There's a new hero in town, Rafam's Master. Is that the name? No. Scarab Cutter Butter. I like Rafal's master. Scabs, you know, scarab. Um, scabs sounds more accurate, I agree with you. Uh, hero power, two mana, discover a plain copy of a minion in your next opponent's warband. Do you know the full details about this? Uh, I've or, played them a few times, yeah. Like, do you know, is if is it, is it a snapshot on your of your opponent's board at the exact time you use it? No, it like, so you, you, steal board, from, right? you steal from the board that they ended their last turn on. Yeah, that's okay. That's what I thought. But it, I will say that um, when you discover scabs from Panda, it seems like it does take real the board snapshot, into account. Okay. Because there are some moments where you know your opponent wouldn't have been able to have a Nomi yet or something, right? And you steal a Nomi anyway with panda and you're like what that the, you know there's no way to have a new last turn right um because you see these like weird screenshots of people stealing a light spawn from galakron who got it through the hero power <laughs> and true. they're like yeah well, i mean if you hear a power on one you, there's no way you had to have a four drop last turn so uh yeah so that that's something that could be taken a look at but you know for uh for for most uses which is when you're just playing scabs you uh you take you first of all the button's not clickable if they didn't have a board and second of all you do just uh get to choose oh, from stuff they had last turn that explains it i thought i outplayed my opponent once where i i uh you held it yeah I no i saw you i saw you stream and it's like <laughs> he's holding it until the end of the turn because he thinks that he's delaying it right yeah no 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 
Like, and it makes it makes sense and if you don't just, know, right? Yeah, he yeah. just had two minions on the board, and I was like, wait, he like, ah, how did he know? Over. You know, I, I played him like crazy. <laughs> But okay, now that I, I haven't got to play the hero myself, so now it makes more sense. Damn, I thought I thought I could put some brain, you know, outplays into this hero, but no, I just just play normal, I guess. Apparently, over here. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, anything else about the hero? I do think the yeah, hero yeah. I think he's strong. I think he's really strong. It's just very flexible, very good. Um, um, adaptability to the situation. So uh, I played a few games with him pretty much immediately when I came back to the game, and they were like okay-ish. But I had some some awkward matchup where I hit like a Mayev who didn't have a minion because she sold and hero powered into an AFK who didn't have a minion, right? So it's like okay, well I can't use my hero power. Um, but most of the time, the way how I play him is I'll I'll play tier one until at least five gold. Because if you can get, it's kind of like Zyrella esque, where if you can get a token on four gold, that means you can buy token, sell token, and hero power. So that's pretty. That's pretty nice. And and you're already your hero power is sort of already pre selected of what would my opponent buy. And most of the times, it's tokens or micro mummies or something. So you're getting something playable. Uh, and then on the five gold turn, you just buy in hero power. And then on the six gold turn you get to do either a roll or you get to do some token stuff or you get to skip the hero power and just buy some buy some minions if you have two good minions in the shop. Um, something very, very specific if you want to like dive deep already is I've played quite a bit of tier one curve with scabs and with scabs, I actually like leveling on six gold. So what I'll do is I'll either uh, go up to... Uh, I'll probably buy something, hero power something, and then with the leftover gold, I'll sell a token and level. Because then the turn after that, I can level, sell a token, and hero power again. Instead of level, sell, level the turn after. Uh, and what that allows you to do is, if your opponent did have a good turn, where they power level or something, sometimes you just steal a 3-drop straight away. Like I've done that where I've had, um, what was it, a thorn collar. So then on seven gold, you get to both discover a four drop from your triple and you get to like put a thorn collar on the board. So um, there's some there's some cool stuff you can do with him. So that, that's already very, very specific. But if you're playing tier one curve with him, I kind of like pre-leveling on six to then on seven sell hero power and uh, add another minion to the board. But yeah, it's, it's good, right? Like um, late game, <clears throat> steal a Malgadon, <laughs> right? It's just like, oh, nice, a Malgadon. Or you're playing dragons and you fight a dragon guy. Oh, Nadina. Oh, Caligos, right? So... Uh, it feels like it's one of those heroes where it's Tess-like, where if you get to the late game, you do some stupid stuff, but he gets a lot of help early as opposed to Tess. So it feels like a way, way, way better Tess, right? You're generating minions um, at one gold less as opposed to one gold extra, because Tess will have to pay one gold for the roll and then um, pay three gold for whatever you're buying. So that's a four gold investment instead of a two gold investment. So yeah, you just don't get to see all the the rest of the shops. Like yeah, that. yeah, you don't. The obvious drawback is if it's seven good minions, you only get to take one. Um, but that's that's pretty much all it takes in the early game, right? If right. you can consistently steal one good minion, like your board's gonna be strong, you're gonna be able to level, you're gonna be able to survive, and if you make it to the late game, a lot of the time you get to steal some good stuff. Uh, now you do need to do a little bit of scouting, look at your opponent's warband and say, hmm, seven beasts. Do I really want to take something from my mech line up here? Yes. Probably not, right? Let me not wait. insane. I got, you know, what do you tell Got a hero power do? every turn, right? Because I, I see that in my chat from time. You got your mech line up and just People like just hero power. power every turn is like, well, if he's seven elementals and I'm playing beasts or whatever, like probably time not. Time to switch, right? right? You just, no, get just another, take another. one at a time, right? Just fight him seven times and you'll steal seven <laughs> elementals. The plan is perfect. The uh, yeah no but overall um I like him very flexible because you could also just say hey I'm just gonna level and then on five gold you just buy in hero power and on six gold you might level again and sell hero power like there's so flexibility it's it's uh, really you know and that, that's just what happens when you have cheap hero powers um, you get to adjust your curve based on what the shop tells you based on what your opponents tell you. Um, and, and whatever else can affect the game, like a ghost or something like that. Very fair. I, uh, 
I haven't played them, so I feel like my advice doesn't matter. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm like six games deep already or so. That, yeah, that's way more than me. You know, infinitely more. <laughs> Feels good. Solid hero. Solid hero. He looked, he looked good anyways, just from uh, the day he came out. So I'm not surprised to see that other people still agree with that assessment and go from there. Uh, next thing we will be talked about, I believe, is the meta, the post-Diablo meta. How has that been? How has that changed? You know, Diablo's been, you know, a thorn in the side, at least for like the week they got buffed or the two weeks they got buffed, right? But now Diablo's completely gone. No one has to see him anymore. He doesn't do anything uh, besides that. But I do feel like he has changed the meta a little bit. Like people are a little bit more willing to like go all in and push and deal damage to you hurt you if you want you know just because they have that experience of oh diablo could kill me here this is how to get strong and then they just have that skill set in their their toolbox now where people just like know how to get strong to turn and punish you if you you're like lazing around it's it's true but i think that that's also kind of that comes at a cost sure. where you you invest resources and getting strong that's usually so the I think, people that are going to die i'm not talking about the people like, all right yeah yeah, yeah. so like, that that's just like proper gameplay indeed right just recognizing like probably have to sell the brand probably can't level or probably yeah, have to do this well, probably have to do that uh, the brand question that's the, i mean you know, all all in brand. all in you, means you the, brand the brand thing right no, no, we've no. seen we've seen collins is all in it rubs off on me sometimes where i'm like we're all in we're keeping a brand, of course, but we're all in. We're all in. Like, we're know, basically it's one, it's one in. Slot. What's one slot gonna do, really? We're, like, we're do I really need to sell my brand? In, but we open up the oh, if I live here, I could actually right. win the game. Still, let's not let's not throw away. The thing our is, usually card. you don't live there when <laughs> when you're like on the ropes like that. Like usually you are dead. So yeah, then, what, what difference is a brand gonna make? You know, <laughs> like, come on, you know, you gotta open up the win possibility. Why not? Why this give is, up this is why I like playing with Ragnaros because Ragnaros Ragnaros buffs the brand, and you're like, yes, I can keep it now. Very good. Permanent part of a roster. No, um, no I, I think it's fair. It has trained people in the, um, I guess, ability to spike as hard as possible when they know they're going to get hit. But I, I will say that I think that overall, uh, and you know, especially for people who played a lot during the Diablo meta and thrived on the Diablo meta, I think they are suddenly going to take a hit. And I've I've seen some stuff already on Twitter about people saying like, holy crap, what happened? Uh, I just like tanked a bunch of MMR or like I've, I'm super stuck. I don't, you know, nothing's working anymore. And I think a lot of that is um, that that's where I guess you and I like thrive a bit yeah, more. We, like we didn't do it. We, like Diablo, we what, can, what was a Diablo? Let's just go to six. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we yeah, we we were we were pushing so hard where we did we did realize like in tournaments it's like okay, okay, in tournaments no six, no six, no six in tournaments, it's fine. But <laughs> on ladder we were still going to six and now it's just like the weights dropped off. It's like, oh I'm not guaranteed getting hit for 15. Oh, I have more than 25 HP to work with. Yeah, baby, let's go. So yeah, that 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 has been very fun for me. I've done a lot of tier six gaming, way more than I have. Um, than when Diablo was meta. So I, I think the game is just a lot more fun. I think if you are a skilled player, knowledgeable player, experienced player, you get to do so much more than like, well, I guess I'll just get some jugglers in because otherwise I'm going to die. Or, you know, like I need to go all in for a crocodile and a mama bear because I'm just going to be dead. You know, I'm mandatory taking 15 from Diablo. Everyone else is going to spike. So I, I got to have my comp together immediately. Otherwise I'm dead. Whereas now... Sometimes you just get this round where there's another greed lord. You're like, ah, we're both not taking damage. Yes, let's go. And That's yeah, then you get the. want to be in my lobby in the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can just high five on the way to like, Yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> um, yeah. Right here. So yeah, regardless, uh, I, my my personal uh, my personal take on it is, I think it's good for the game. Diablo's out. Um, way more options. Way more things that are viable now that you just have more life total to work with because effectively in the diablo meta i always said like you had 25 hp right on, on turn eight you were getting hit for 15. if the diablo player had a good start you were getting hit for 15. that's somewhat yeah. non-negotiable it was always funny seeing the clips when diablo is like killing everybody like pentakill bam yeah, yeah. just like it was yeah. like the 
if if enough people are alive by turn 12, that's where it happened, right? He gets like a bunk yeah, <laughs> and just kills. Turn like that happened turn in, 12, yeah, for sure. That happened in Rivals, right? Like yeah. um my lobby, I have this like somewhat questionable top four where I'm like, okay, I'm dead here, but then the Diablo killed everyone. I'm just like, hey, shared second, third, fourth, whatever. Because three people died at the same time. So even in tournament play, um, you know, like top level players, they they couldn't stop that as well. It's just like, oh, Diablo got yeah. some advantages, you know, snowball like crazy now. So that's not just something that happened in, you know, ladder lobbies or low level lobbies that was everywhere. Yeah, that was true. There was some discussion where people were saying that you would be able to play around the Diablo power spike, you know, like if you know, if you did if you did your research or whatever. You would you'd be able to survive the Diablo power spike. You just play around and just play full tempo. You know that's fine. You Diablo won't kill you. But then targets yeah. happen, and the and and when the Diablo player is also good, it's a problem, right? Because <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, it's like if you go full tempo and the guy that has eight spells in a fucking ten ten for free goes full tempo. Guess who the fuck is gonna win? You know. <laughs> Yeah. So, like that just blows my mind how people are just like no no you just got to learn how to play around it's like you can't play around someone who's got an extra guy and state spells in his hand dude like yeah, that's not possible it, yeah. it's rough right like the the advantage was too much and it just goes to show you yeah. like you know just how dominating you know stats are you know hey look free stats yeah it's it's as well like when when we first saw the we were like oh this wind fury shit is so it's, dog shit right it's so right, bad and they were like right. wait big hydra with yeah, wind fury yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. It, it's crazy. So, like yeah. be sin elemental in and you just get the yeah. wildfire or the hydra and you just stack that like because it it yeah. it literally gives you everything you need oh here's plus four plus four twice oh here's a wind yeah. fury oh yeah you just get a 10 10 attack hydra wind fury like, for free like you don't even have to do any work you just hit one hydra and let's say you can buff over. It a little like bit everyone's here. taking 15 yeah, everyone's everyone, taking 15 you yeah. get it you land one Hydra as a good Diablo player. You know what you're doing. You had two Claws on Wind Fury. Like, everyone's taking 15. You just can't. There's no way to play. I mean, the way to play around that would be, like, a Divine Shield taunt and, like, double selfless to the side or something. Like, who the fuck has that on turn 8, right? There's no no one has that. And, and then you Without, get another yeah. full board, right? Like, that's, like, you know, and then... Yeah, that's you... only the first minion, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. And then, I mean, after you deal 15 everyone, now you have a full stack of fresh new oh, spells. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. And, and that one you can, that, like, a lot of the time what would happen is you wouldn't save those all for turn 12, at least not in, like, high competitive right. play. Um, a lot of it, it was just like, okay, let me just go to five now, pop some spells, and then, like, get some mama bears, get some crocs, and, like, just play tempo beasts. And, and then if you were able to set up a full tempo beast comp, then, you know, turn 12 is going to be just nasty because, like, Tempo Beast with an extra 20-20 on the board. Yeah, that's, you know, usually when you beat Tempo Beast, it's, like, very close and you snipe the mama early. But, like, if, it's, if there's a 20-20 for free at the end and they get any kind of buffs or the demon or... Yeah, another thing that was so toxic, man. Like, oh, oh I tied Diablo. Drives. I guess I'm taking 11 damage. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's such a good example of why do tokens deal full damage that is something that i will not let go of i will repeat that every time why do tokens deal full damage you tied someone that had a diablo secret you were still sometimes getting damage cap if damage cap is gone sometimes you take over cap because he spawns like battle master in mama on tier five or you take 16. Well, you can't get in mama right but you can get like double battle master or Azul battle master. sure sure or you're on six thing. right yeah like yeah. like the amount of times where people were on six and they spawned an imp mama at the end is just like insane so right yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, much yeah damage, you, but... you spawn the imp mama and then the imp mama attacks right to, to you know no it doesn't attack right god oh, yes those that's... are in like tie tie double tie situations where you both have a spirit, yeah and then you spawn the imp mama and like a you... battle master and then the, the other guy spawns an icky imp in the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, I lost the game in the tournament, right? Because we both tied. We both had the secret. We were both on the same level. But he gets he gets good minions. Well, not he his minions aren't even good, but better than mine. I got like a battle master three one, right? Or 
or something and, and, and he yeah. gets like an imprisoner and then he wins oh wow amazing because and i was just like damn dude it's just it's like, just an example of just like awful awful rng like does not contribute to the game in a positive manner whatsoever it's like yeah, yeah. i think that the the secret that spawned demons was by far the most like frustrating spell that they gave diablo so yeah i don't know if they're gonna like learn from that or if that's like oh no well that, that seemed to work fine next time we do an event like that we're just gonna have uh even more of those minion spawning secrets that was kind of fun uh, i don't know uh do you want to go back to diablo meta like you know, now that you've been without diablo for a bit do you miss it a bit you know any... I, I think i was better with it than most i think most were just going batshit crazy and i was just like well kind of like playing juggler anyway so you know <laughs> 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 but I I like this a lot more. Don't okay, get me wrong. Okay, but okay. I'm usually I usually adapt better to those situations where, like uh, the same thing with the Doomsayer meta, right? Most people in the Doomsayer meta was like, I cannot wait until this shit is gone. This is so bullshit. And I was like, yeah, I mean it's bullshit, but I mean I'll guess I'll just roll for Doomsayer and play it because yeah. So anyways, yeah, very happy it's gone. Let there be no confusion. Well, for me, you know, I kind of missed Diablo a little bit, you know. Yeah, you had that Twitter post. Right? <laughs> uh, we were we were like playing TFT, and Carlos was like, "Oh, Diablo's gone." Let me just like tweet out like, "Oh, I'm kind of sad, Diablo's gone." <laughs> it's like, I'm not even playing the fucking game right now. <laughs> we just tweeted, "I'm sad that Diablo's gone." Oh man, yeah. it's just, oh, man. I get the interactions, you know. It's like. Very I was crazy. like, e easy karma or whatever, easy, uh, easy I got, reaction. I got multiple yeah. people telling to cancel Colin, so I, you know, it didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> didn't work out how I imagined, but yeah, maybe that is how I imagined it. Anyways, yeah, uh, interesting. Just seeing the Diablo and Diablo Medans. We'll see if a different iteration comes back. You know, like maybe they reintroduce Diablo, maybe like a little bit weaker, right? Maybe not as um everyone fights diablo maybe one person or, or something fights diablo or... yeah it's it's tough like i i think the global stuff is better like the the spell yeah, kind yeah, of stuff yeah for sure I, I do think that was a better approach but yeah it's interesting yeah there's it's a it's a it's a whole hero they have in their repertoire you know it's hard to make new heroes i'm i'm kind of kind of Con convinced about that right now <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know it's just just sitting there like hey it could be good you know but yeah uh moving on from that i believe we have our last topic here we just want to talk about event just you know just a little general discussion about the event like i was i was generally gonna name this title is avenge minions too strong like that was gonna be the working title but i changed it thoughts on event you know like why is it impactful is it good da, da, da. do you like it do you hate it do you want to change do you think the number should be tweaked or it should be removed blah 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 just like general thoughts on avenge because i feel like avenge has been like pretty demanding or like impactful since it came out yeah. like all the like really crazy things kind of hinge on avenge views basically where you know light spawn like I, I remember when it first came out no one was really thinking about light spawn i feel like it was all let's go well weird, that's because doomsayer was like doomsayer and um the leapfrogger those those two were really yeah like, those were, were just op yeah but then they got nerfed and then doomsayer kind of fell off a little bit but then tank right like oh tank was the new hotness just temp one with tank da 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 right and then people are always like ah oh, tank's annoying da 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 and then like light spawn hey light spawn it's really good <laughs> you know and and like throughout the site it's like hey mama bear got a new friend his name is cock cock's pretty good da 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 cock cock mama just killing people Right, and on the side of like green thumbs, like I'm better than light spawn. <laughs> just coming in, like, hey, I'm pretty good. And, and then Nest Matron has just been like stable the whole time, like, yeah, I'm good. I do, I get you value, da, da, da. you know. So they've all been doing stuff, and the poison murloc, right? A lot of times when you need something, you you're you're relying on something. You know, you need something to kill that Terragosa. Hey. It's the two six poison murloc in the back. You're right there, ready to save you. So I, I do feel like they've all been pretty uh, impactful, doing a lot of things. So uh, generally, I'm gonna start off with I'd say I kind of like the mechanic. I just do think 
a lot of the really powerful stuff hinges on the mechanic as well, right? Like, there's the, a lot of the nutty, like the, some of the most crazy boards I've created are just basically due to Avenge Minions. Like, they do everything. <laughs> <laughs> they give me the poison, they give me the money, they give me the power, they give me the tempo. <laughs> they do everything. So it's kind of weird, you know, and it just makes some other minions so strong, right? Like the Acolyte so strong, the Demon one so strong because you're like, oh, if I hit the Avenge minion, wow, this is like three, three procs or something, or this is a free proc with a taunt, you know? So it, it just kind of warps the game. A bit right there was definitely a game i looked at and i was like i should have bought the avenge synergy so that when i hit the avenge it's so strong like like that's the that's the game plan just hit get the buy the avenge synergy so when i hit the avenge it's so good right and that's kind of weird right like because it kind of reduces doing other things that are not event centric where right? you're just kind of focused on hey the best plan is to hit an avenge minion so let me go fully you know line my game plan up to do that perfectly and any any other game plan loses to the event so let me not let me not do anything fancy or weird or different because if i hit the event stuff let's go you know and then you do the game plan you hit it you win when you do the game plan you don't hit it, you feel really bad right because it's not like you can't do anything else but you're like well i've set up my whole board to do this really well and now now that i don't have it you know now that i have a you know what's it called uh What's that six three? The six three dude, you know the uh, the six major three major domo. Made now I have a major domo, you know, with with taunt taunt minions. <laughs> yeah, you're like a few acolytes and an icky and be like yeah. domo. Yep. What yeah. do I do now? You know, so it's kind of weird. So that's just really my overall thoughts. I don't think it's a bad mechanic. I think it's a fun mechanic. I think it's cool. It's just like it does a lot, right? It's based and it's one of the most powerful mechanics that a lot of the game plans do f revolve around <coughs> it, especially in the early game. Like in the late game, when you have like your tier six, or whatever, like who cares, right? But in the early game, mid game, a lot of the stuff, um, that is where a lot of people do stack their tempo or stack their, their hopes on hitting, you know, event stuff. Right? What, do you, what do you think? So I, th the more I play, the more I, dislike them a bit more where i will say that i've i've done really well with the bench minions but i think as mm, as more people get really proficient at figuring out how to get them and how to use them i've started to enjoy like non-elemental lobbies a lot more because the saying. uh it's very difficult to beat someone that gets an early light spawn. It's just I've I've had games where I felt like I played my heart out and I did like some old school leveling and stuff, but you know, I, I got bounced from arena with four light spawns into like a Gallic round with two light spawns, and there was almost nothing I could have done because elementals, when they get big, they have shield and they have overkill. So it's really hard to get around that. Like if your opponent has a big whirly and a big overkill, good luck trying to scam that. Right, shield and overkills, really good at getting rid of spores, getting rid of max nah, and you're not gonna outstat them either because they got an early light spawn. So I overall the trend that we've been seeing with let's say Promo Drake Terragosa, even though they're not Avenge minions, they also open up that ridiculous scaling early. Uh light spawn opens up ridiculous scaling early. I'm less of a uh critic, I would say, of Doomsayer and Nest Matron, because especially now that Doomsayer has been rebalanced, um, you still need to play, right? You still need to figure out what you're doing. You need to use that money. You need to tier. You need to figure it out. I see people with like a golden Nest Matron dying a lot more than people with a golden True. light spawn. Like, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah, like, screw up a light spawn. That's the yeah, thing. like it's so buy big elemental. <laughs> yep, right. Buy triple. Yep. So it's very straightforward. If you have two acolytes and a light spawn early, the chance that you're going to top two that game is incredibly high. Right? Someone else might be rolling higher than you. Maybe you get unlucky. There's a shutter rock or whatnot. But for the most part, you're going to do incredibly well. And <clears throat> that's something that I don't really like when it's just like very straightforward, it's very simple, very guaranteed scaling. Uh, because you might say like, well, Avenge isn't guaranteed. Like we're pretty good right now and we're guaranteeing it anyway, right? Like you have. Um, Ring Matron, you have Acolytes, you have a Void Lord, um, just in general, just like one taunt and like Icky Imp and whatnot. So you're, you're going to get sort of scaling. 
And even if it's not guaranteed, that's even more toxic. Or it's just like, oh, you know, like my light spawn got sniped and theirs didn't. So <laughs> I guess they deserve to win and I don't. Um, so yeah, the more I the more I play with them and the more I think about the game, I prefer the meta without them because I have played non-elementals and to an extent non-demon lobbies because if you get like Wrathweaver, Doomsayer, it's still somewhat straightforward where you get demons, you get scaling on your Wrathweaver and you get uh, value right to level. Um, so it feels like a lot more skill testing where you need to now figure out what you're doing. Right, you might play some Kulbors, or you might do some mech shenanigans. Beasts are still good, I would say, and also maybe a little straightforward. But I do think you need that option of like, okay, what am I going to do if I don't have any scaling? And I think beasts offer a great answer in that regard, where you get croc, you get mama bear, and you get strong. But it's it's a gamble that you have to take, right? You have to go to five, or you have to triple into fives. That's pretty much it. I guess another thing with the Avenge minions is the amount of times where I'm able to triple into a five, but I choose to stay low, play my triple, get my four drop, and then level to four is too damn high. <laughs> so if on a regular basis, I'm just ignoring five drops completely because the four drops are so nutty. If you get a uh, light spawn or matron or something, something's probably also wrong uh, where I don't really want to sit on them for an extra turn for a six because they'll take too much damage, but I definitely don't want a five. <laughs> So I'll just slam my golden minion, take my triple, and then press the level button. And that that just feels wrong when you consistently do that. And I do that pretty much all the time. Uh, so yeah, maybe maybe it's a bit um, personal, right? The opinion where maybe not many other people share that. I'm actually not really sure. I haven't really talked about this very much. But this is just what I feel with playing the meta more and more and more. Um, now, I don't want to be too critical and it's like, well, you can't do this mechanic and you can't do that mechanic um, but that's just my opinion on it where uh, i think the early game scaling right the more that the game disincentivizes you from tripling into fives and sixes i think the more we move away from that original <clears throat> i guess finesse in the game where you have to figure out a way to tier and you have to figure out a way to get those scaling engines on fives and six um, the more it's just about okay who hits the nuts early and then rides that and who gets to uh who has the option to win the lobby and who has to play for a second and third and stuff yeah this is kind of sounding less of like an event issue and more of like maybe just a light spawn kind of thing. yeah Cause yeah because i mean tank tank was like toxic but at five i think it's fine yeah. um croc i think is fine green thumb i think is fine okay. seven i think is fine don't touch it's, my green thumb <laughs> no <laughs> green thumb op man like, oh, i mean green thumb totally not op <clears throat> definitely not as good as a light uh, fight anyway move light spawn to like a five drop and just like buff the stats a little bit would that be like an interesting thing to be like oh yeah here's another option well I don't think it would be that crazy because we have Nomi at five. <laughs> Light spawn is kind of better than Nomi. Better than Nomi, right? Yeah. It's uh, just where crazy. if you have the right board for it, it's yeah. it's pretty much a better Nomi because with Nomi, you actually buy and play elementals. With Light spawn, you don't even have to play the elemental. Um, the reason why Light spawn goes so well with Nomi is Nomi is slow, but it's it's like your elementals get too big when you're playing Light spawn, so they stop scaling. But then the Nomi takes over. Then you yeah. play the Nomi. And yeah. you're big enough that you can afford the Temple Laws of putting the Nomi on the board. And the Elementals you're buying are already 2020s. So you don't fall behind. Whereas normally Nomi sucks because you have to put a 4-4 four four on the board and you have to start buying like 1-4s one one and 2-4s. Yeah, uh, it's so four, slow and it's yeah. so... Ugh. But if you get to start buying like 14 damage Divine Shield Whirlies, you're like, oh, baby, let's go. All right, that's... you know, I, I was going to buy that minion anyway. Yeah, so then, you know, Nomi, Nomi is just great when it supplements that. Yeah. So I, I do think that Light Spawn to five, um, that would probably be a healthy change. But maybe it's make it Avenge three. Maybe yeah, I, I was thinking, I was yeah. thinking about the other stuff, and it, like it felt so bad. Like Avenge three is like it's it's really that's gonna that's gonna hurt. <laughs> that slows it down yeah. a lot. Yeah. Like, so. You kind of like, cause you can hit light spawn at five in like the same, like you, you maybe do it differently, but you can hit it like with some heroes, like the same speed. 
right? You, you've been skipping eight gold. Before. We're talking yeah. eight gold, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of the time, the reason why people have these like stupid boards is they pull it at seven, yeah. right? They pull it on seven or and they, they have like two act lights in the game. Or something Game's over, just, yeah, right? Yeah, like good. like hook dusk with two light spawns and an acolyte. It's like okay, pack it up. Yeah. It's over. Um, because once again, elementals isn't just about big stats. They have shield and they have overkill. So a it's good like elemental pirates. player. It's not like pirates, man. With yeah, stats. right. With pirate, <laughs> like you get you get like huge salty looters. Who are like okay, meet my reborn max now, right? Like I'm gonna kill two I've, of your I've guys been anyway. Wanting a pirate with divine shield for a long time. Just, just uh, to like, yeah. Just to like I don't know about like you know, Eliza. Not Eliza. Not an Eliza. No, like, no, no, just... no, no, no. But I'm I'm saying like you put a pirate with divine shield in the front, yeah. right? Like with Eliza. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty strong. We, we, I mean, you, we're talking about scally, <laughs> scally players. You know, like they don't care. They're like it's, it's just a just a different scally for me. You know, like it's, da, 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 da. So, I don't know. I thought it would be. I, you know, I've been interested in because it, it feels like pirates are like they just get stats and money and that's it. You know, like. And and well, they get dogs and they get scab, you know. Yeah. You know, they have a lot of other like things. when when you play hogger, at least as a competent player, like you don't care, right? Because no, you're you just gonna make you're reborn. Getting, yeah, you're just you just make the, reborn max yeah, nest and, and yeah, yeah. golden selfless baron or whatnot, or you or you transition to dogs, right? Like, Either what one. Is in, you know, like why do us pirate players have to rely on another archetype? What I can't believe this. <laughs> Well, if, if beasts are if beasts are out, it's great because then people don't poison don't Max, poison, not you. Poison, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so that's true. you just <laughs> chunk, right? True. You just keep going, man, right? You just get the selfless and the Baron, and you just scale. Uh, but now, yeah, I mean that 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 has been the complaint I think of a lot of players where oh, pirates aren't really viable, and and that's that's how you get these silly buffs to like Tony, for instance, where now the moment you hit a Tony and an Eliza, it's pretty much a golden Eliza. Yeah, it's yeah, like I've Avenge seen so Four is more nothing. like four Eliza boards, and it's it's, just like... it's nothing. Avenge Four is one acolyte and a Scallywag, and then it's done. Right, one yeah. Scallywag and an acolyte, you're done. Or going first and having two minions that die and one acolyte, that's also already good enough because you attack, you lose one. They attack, you lose an acolyte. You attack, you lose one. They attack, you lose an acolyte. Boom, you're done. So when all you need is essentially an acolyte. It's a bit too much, right? Like yeah, the, the <laughs> one one drop more. gives you a golden Eliza. It's this like oh, me, chill. Grease Bot, I, I don't think they deserve the nerf. Like I knew, no. I knew already. I knew already that it was a weird nerf. But like now that you've played with it a while, like it's like, damn, dude, what what happened to my Mech Divine Shield like, scaling? It's gone. No one plays it at all. They killed it, right? Yeah. yeah. They shot it with a shotgun. Like damn, that's a bit much, you know? Like, and. I think it's also like I don't know if it's just going off general stats or going off complaints, but it's just like, man, if they if they would balance off top level play to be like top players are like grease spot. What what's that card again? <laughs> oh, the divine shield buff guy thingy. Yeah, they nerfed that. Really? Okay, that's weird. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, it's just yeah, no one was playing Grease Pot. Like I mean, like maybe not no one, right? You like, you, but if you were playing Grease Pot, you weren't happy. You were you know? George. Like, you were George. You were not happy. You, you, you were, were or you were George. You're right? George. <laughs> yeah, that's you're, George that's you're happy. Right? Yeah. You're George. You're happy. But if you're anyone but George, you're not really happy with a <laughs> with a Grease Pot. Anyways, that's me going off a tangent of. But I mean, that's what the podcast is for, I guess, giving our opinion on uh, the balance of the game, and I, I think that. <clears throat> It's not an opinion I've heard too much right now about light spawn, but I think as uh, the meta keeps going and going, and people just see this over and over, I think that that might become a more common complaint where it's like, mm, can we do something about light spawn because it's a bit much, and it's you can't screw it up. That's the worst part, right? Like matron, like I saw a deathwing with a golden uh, nest matron die like two turns later. Like you I, can screw that up. That. I've, I've, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. I'm you fumble that. with your cards. You're like, how do I level? Do I buy? Do I do I continue milking? Ah, my, my board is kind of weak. Like, like, yeah, but I mean, like, you give really, really good players a golden nest matron. Yeah, they're gonna run with it. But at least you gotta work for it. Whereas, you know, light spawn, you're just like, oh god, I'm, what I'm gonna do? Buy some big elementals, I guess. Okay, that's that solved. Right. Anyways, <clears throat> that's uh, my I, I two do cents. I feel like light spawn doesn't get talked about because it's like. It was almost like secret tech in in a way, like uh, for a while, where it's like, oh, the light spawn is 
just focus on that. It's so good. Don't no one knows, you know. But now, like the meta has developed, everyone kind of knows, and it's like now it's starting to be like, well, I'm not the only one doing this. <laughs> you know? Oh, for sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's yeah. that's it, right? I just noticed my opponents yeah. rolling me with lights falling more. It's more. I'm like, now it's a problem. <laughs> When I was doing it, it was fine. Now it's a problem. Yeah, when it was secret tech, no, I had this was a great strategy. Now that everyone's doing it, uh, it was like I was playing this refined, buffing my elementals into shop move. Like it was cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now it's like for noobs. Now it's for noobs. Yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of my feelings and like why it's like been under the radar. Like no one really like ah, oh, this card is so broken. But but it is. Right? But no one's like it is broken. <laughs> Let's get up on ours and talk about this every day. No one, you know, it's it's not the it's not the quest stink that Brian, uh, you know, Kibler's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, yeah, I I see that every day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's it's pretty interesting, but generally, you know, overall our thoughts on Avenge. I don't think it's a bad mechanic, and it's fun to play, and it's cool, and. There's a lot of stuff to it, and I wouldn't mind seeing more of it. Just got to make sure it doesn't, like, command the rest of the game, I would say. Like, things like Light Spawn, where it's so easy, so simple. Once you get it, you know what to do, and you just, like, you can pilot it blindfolded, right? Those those kind of, like, pure event stuff, maybe not the best, but the other stuff is pretty cool. You know, I'm 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 a fan of the rest of them, generally. Maybe Tank still... Tank still, you know, has their moments, to be fair. Tank, Tank still has its moments where I'm just like, yeah, I don't like this. <laughs> you know, unless, I think five's fair. I think five's fair. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, putting it to four, I think, would kind of hurt it really badly, you know. Like, yeah, that's the goth part like, oh, look at what they did to my boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, generally, uh, you know, I, I do think it's a cool mechanic, but Light Spawn in particular might need some adjustment somewhere, you know, maybe the five, maybe three events. Three events sounds so brutal though. Like I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's, yeah. that's my I, issue. I think the five is, pro but I, I think you, you need to even think in a broader way right. where if I was balancing the game, I think I would try to find a way to break this tripling into four drop meta because I think that tripling into a four drop is totally fine if you're going to use it for tempo to then be strong and level afterwards. I don't think the four should be the end destination where you're like, okay, my game's solved. They, they I got put the all drop. the like the the good like the the compositional minions. Yeah, at four, like, that's the issue. They 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 like and and you could we we we've seen a similar thing where tier five was just trash, and it's just like why. Like, why do that to your game? Why make tier five trash? Like, you want tier five to have some exciting stuff in it yeah. because then people will actually triple into five. It's because it's it used to have exciting yeah. stuff, right? But they haven't, it hasn't changed with the time, right? Light Spawn used to be yeah. like the nuts and everyone's happy. Brand was like Light the nuts, yeah, everyone's happy. Yeah. Baron, you know, has always been like the edgy lord, the edge, the edgy kid. <laughs> you know, like, oh, Baron, sometimes I'm the best thing, but a lot of times I'm useless. You know, I don't know what to do with a Baron. You give me a Baron turn one, I'm just like, this is a one seven. <laughs> you know, like, what, what am I doing with a Baron turn one? Like, you know, Brand turn one, like, hey, you know, Life Fang turn one, hey, you know, but yeah, so there's been good stuff, but it hasn't like evolved where right? you've, they haven't added like a, something new and something directional and like brand is still good but it's you know it's specific baron's still good but it's specific Tri tripling right? in the brand they are so specific yeah. right where like, lights on you get it, it right early in the game and you're happy like it doesn't matter what you're doing you're just, you're just happy right tank you're happy matron, matron you're happy, happy. Matron, yeah girl. right that's that's the difference right where the the fives are specific and the fours are generally happy you're always happy you know you get an si fin in the middle of the game you're like this is just a two and six you the, know like the problem on top of that is to go for a five you're also taking on more risk true because you're you're weaker for an extra turn so you take on more risk to triple into worse minions like it just doesn't make sense right now like the game doesn't make sense when when you're point. better when when you get a bigger payout for the lower risk play your game doesn't make sense <laughs> like you know like like you know 
why is there a tier five anyway? It's just on the way to tier six now. That's what it feels like. It's basically go to five, roll for Croc and Mama. I think that's pretty much right. the only thing I use tier five for. It's like Croc and Mama. It's like, okay, like I don't really have a game plan, Hogger but I'm totally kind of strong. Totally yeah, okay, sure. There's fringe cases. There's like, <laughs> oh, I, I picked up a brand and there's Primal Finn, right? Yeah, it's like, Primal oh, I have, I have Master of Master Realities Baby. and I've got a Domo, sure. But when we're talking about tripling into these minions like uh, uh, yeah uh, don't don't uh, give me a tony uh, triple <laughs> tri triple into a master of realities oh sh get that two, shit out of I here right? six sixes. Yeah, god great. damn yeah that's a six six taunt it's like almost as good as my acolyte <laughs> it's just <laughs> you're just you're just give not happy to any day of the week i hear you yeah, yeah. so that, that's the problem i have or you trip like okay like rolling on five sure you can do some cool stuff but tripling it to fives right now, it's just unless you're a Reno who can like instant right. golden Norway, right. instant golden hogger, like R Reno still does that. But most people just like, what's the reason to ever triple into a five drop these days? It's just yeah, don't want it. True, a little bit sad um, about that part. Maybe it changes, maybe things happen, but yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. But generally, you know, event cool, light spawn weird. Mechanic is cool. Yeah. Just uh, it. I I guess if you'd have to sum it up, it's just easy scaling on a lower tavern tier. I guess below five, that's when things just always go a little crazy. It's like we had Whelp Smuggler that was doing crazy shit. You're like, okay, well, why am I ever leveling? Whelp Smuggler is just too strong right now. When it was bugged or too strong, um, we see it oh, with Promo Drake Chargosa. We see it with Light Spawn. Um, sorry, say again. Oh, what did you say? Frogger, the Frogger, Leap Frogger as well. Uh, yeah, that wasn't really scaling, but uh, yeah, your comp scaled wow. with it, I, I suppose, scaled, right? You yeah. know, I got a car and a fry, the game's over, let's go. I hit <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of it, da, 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 you know, done. after you tripled into Baron, that was sort of the exception, you were just staying on four, because what's the point in going up, right? The, the Reborn Snake was on four, so oh, yeah, they did address true. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you triple into Baron, you're just not going to five unless you were done and you're just like, okay, I'm going to roll for Golden Baron, right? Because you're just griefing yourself while you're going to five. Everything you want is on four or below. Um, so I, I think that creates these unhealthy metas. I Reborn think you have to. Reborn was on four, dude. Yeah, you're. Oh, my God. Yeah, Reborn that's, was on four. Was, it was nutty, true. dude. <laughs> Super nutty. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, but now, overall, a lot of the Avenge minions are fine. Um, although, you know, like Nest Matron, we can debate on whether that's fine because as more people get more proficient with that card, the same thing will happen as with Light Spawn, where you say, like, oh, they got a Matron, they're going to win now because they're not going to screw it up this time. Uh, so it's just a matter of time before people get comfortable enough with that card and how to play that it will become a problem when you see people triple into that. It's already a problem when you see a good player and you see them with a matron. You're like, okay, this is going to be a tough one. I'm going to play for second because, you know, like, uh, you know, I'm playing God knows who. Like, you got Lee against you in your lobby and he's got a golden matron. You're like, okay, well, I'm not winning this. That's for sure. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, my, my general sentiment is easy scaling on like tier four or below is dangerous. I do understand that they want to shake up the game a little bit, and maybe that was even a popular demand or request, but a lot of the time, people don't actually know what they want. <laughs> it's like, I want to be able to scale on tier two. It's like, yeah, oh, it's not good for your game, buddy, right? You know. Yeah, a lot of the time, they, learned, they don't right? fucking know. That's what I've learned, <laughs> It's like with Diablo, right? Like, Diablo's too fucking weak, man. It's just like, you trust me, man. You don't want to see what it looks like when he's stronger. We did talk yeah. about it before they changed we it. Talked we talked about we it. Called we, it. We called it, boys. Let's go. said exactly that. Like, you do not want to see what it looks like when he gets stronger, man. That's <laughs> uh, So, yeah. I, I feel like it's up to the developer to see past that and say, like, I know this is what you're asking, but, you know, like, let, let me let me see. But then, of course, you have to be careful that you don't turn into the, like, you think you do, but you don't, right? Which is then a little bit too condescending. All right. Anyways, that was my uh, my very long-winded rant on Avenge stuff. You mean on, like, Swan, let's be honest with you. The, the other yeah. people were getting compliments left and right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just light spawns like, like okay i guess i won't be in your triples tomorrow sure you don't like me i get it no light spawns for you 
Collins be like, I'd like to distance myself from this. Uh, like, that, I'm, that's I'm true, a yeah. big Light Spawn fan. Yeah. Light Spawn is one of the greatest. Cards big fan of your work, Light Spawn. Yeah. But yeah, that is um, that will be our podcast for today. I'm glad we got through it. You know, I was wasn't a hundred percent sure we were getting it done today, but I uh, I drove back home because I was not at the house and I got the topics done, everything. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, Shady, for participating and uh, making sure making sure we're always on time, always consistent. You know, that's your job. <laughs> yeah, we do. Oh, that's me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the last the last two weeks, I uh, You've been sick, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, I was fun. sick. Yeah. That's that's why we were in here. That's why we were in here. Yeah. That's for sure. You see, your no, we're back, back, man. Improvements, and you should send something. Uh, comments at hsbgpodcast at gmail dot com. But other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I uh, hope you guys are, are glad that the show is back. You know, all that good stuff. Anyways, any any final thoughts on your shady? You know? Nah, just happy to be back. Thank you guys for listening as always, and thank you Collins for setting up the slides and such. Yes, that's so that's so underappreciated. You know, I just gotta say, you know, I don't you don't get like hordes of emails of people saying. I don't like, hear it enough that your that slides are funny. Great. You know, the memes yeah. are great. You put a lot of effort into this one. You know, right, guys, please send some emails complimenting Collins. That, that, that would that would be great. I would love to read that. You know, there we go. But other than that, uh, thank you guys. Take care of yourselves. I'm for today.